in this tutorial, you'll see how to download the software for and then install and configure Putty and Super Putty. That's the SSH secure shell software client that we can use to connect to our devices and manage them at the command line. I'm following along with the simple step-by-step -step instructions in my How to Build a NetApp Lab for Free ebook, which you can download for free from www.flatbox.com. The networks I'm going to connect to here and the IP addresses that I configure are for that NetApp Lab, but it's really easy to adapt the instructions to suit whichever project you're working on. As always, I'm working from my how to build a NetApp ONTAP lab for free PDF. And the section that we want to use here is down near the bottom in the bookmarks. It's the Super Putty install. First thing to do is to go to the download page for Putty. So I will click on the link. And the one we want is 64-bit Putty installer for Windows. So click on that to download it. I've already downloaded it, so it's already in my downloads folder. So I will click on the Putty installer to do the install. Click on run here. Click on next. It's a really basic install. Click next again. I do want to have the shortcut on my desktop and click on install. That will do the install. It will run through really quickly. I don't need to see the readme file. And I can click finish on there. Okay, next thing to do is to actually open up Putty from the desktop. And I'm going to tweak some of the settings in here. So I click on default settings and load that so it's going to affect all of the shortcuts that I create later in Putty. And things that I want to do here. First one, click on Window, and the lines of scroll back defaults to a low number, so I'm going to set this to 2000. What this is for is so that when I am entering commands, it allows me to scroll back through a lot of history and see what I did earlier. The first time you run into this where you don't have enough history, you'll see how it, annoying it can be if you haven't done that. Other ones that I want to do for connecting to our ONTAP clusters, you need to change the SSH session settings. So go to SSH and then KEX, and then make sure that Diffie-Hellman Group 14 is up at the top, and then Diffie-Hellman Group Exchange is one above, worn below here. Now, I've already had Putty installed in this laptop and it's cached some of my previous settings. So you might see things slightly differently, but set it up so that what you've got in the end is the same as what I've got. Other things that you might want to change, if we click on Window and under their appearance, you can set a different font size if you want to have a bigger font. You can also change the colors as well. So if I go on the default foreground color, and the default background color, you see that I've changed those just to make it look a bit nicer for me. Okay, once so the ones you really want to do are under window, the lines of scroll back, set that to 2000, and under SSH and KEX, you have to have this set like this, or you're not going to be able to connect to your ONTAP clusters. Okay, once you've got those settings done, go back up to session at the top again, click on default settings again, and click on save. Now we can add in shortcuts to here to our different virtual machines. So the first one is going to be connecting to the management address on cluster one. So that is 172.23.1.11. And then click in the saved sessions field. And I'll call this cluster one and save that. And because I already configured my default settings, it's going to inherit those default settings. That's why I had to do that first. The next one is 172.23.1.21, and that is going to be going to cluster 2. I will save that as well. We've also got 172.23.4.2, 
which is Linux A and 172.23.5.2 which is Linux B okay so once I've saved that I've now got oh, I went and overwrote that one let me do that again yeah it's easy to make that mistake let me add Linux A again because I overwrote it and save it this time and now I've got cluster 1, cluster 2, Linux A and Linux B and part 8 is great but there's one thing that's not so great about it. So let me show you that and then you'll see why we're going to install Super Putty. Right now, I've got my Cluster 2, my Linux A and my VIOS router running to give me connectivity to my virtual machines. So if I double click on Cluster 2 now, it will connect to it. You might see a pop up here telling where you have to click yes for the SSH key. If you see that, then just click on yes. And I'm going to log in here as admin and my password is flatbox1 so you can see i can get to the command line in putty once i've done this but if i want to also have my linux a machine a command line open to that at the same time up in the top left here i right click and i go new session that'll open up the putty window again and then i can double click on linux a and in here, I can log in as the user of Flatbox, and the password was Flatbox1. So you see while I'm using this, I can open up multiple sessions, but they all open in separate windows. With Super Party, I can have it all in the one window in different tabs, so it's more convenient. So let's install Super Party next. I'll just close these Party windows, close that session, and the other one and then i will scroll down in the pdf to the link for super putty so this was just all the settings for putty and here is the link to download super putty so i will click on that and then the one you want is super putty 1409 zip so click on that to download it again i have downloaded that already and rather than having it permanently in my downloads folder i'm going to drag that into my documents folder and then in my documents folder i'm going to extract it here okay now i can double click on that super putty folder and in there i'm going to right click on the super putty executable and i'm going to send it to the desktop as a shortcut then i'm going to go onto my desktop and with super putty you have to run it as administrator so i need to tweak the shortcut so i'm going to right click on it and then go to properties and then on the shortcut tab click on advanced and then tick the checkbox to run it as administrator and then i can say okay there and okay again now i can double click to open up super putty and what will normally happen when you first open it is that options will open by default so what you want to check in here is that your putty.exe location is filled in so that should be pointing at the putty.exe executable in program files every all the other settings in here don't matter just make sure that this is filled in with the correct location and then click on ok the next thing to do is we'll import our putty sessions into super putty so click on file and then import sessions and then from putty settings and it will ask are you sure you want to do this duplicates may be created yeah so this is why it's important to have all your shortcuts in putty first don't add more later because if you import again what happens is the original ones get imported again as duplicates and then you have to go and delete them it's quite annoying okay so i've now got my putty sessions imported so if i double click on putty sessions over here on the right and then expand this i can see all of the settings the sessions that i had saved in putty if you don't see this sessions over on the right then go to view and select sessions and it will show up okay so let's double click on cluster two 
and I can log in here as admin and password flatbox1 and I can also double click on Linux A and see it opens up as a second tab and I can log in here with my Linux user and now rather than having two separate windows for the two separate sessions I've got them in one window in two different tabs and I can click between them like this and I can see the name on the top here as well so it's just way more convenient like this and it's also less likely that you'll end up typing something in the wrong window okay so that is how to set up putty and super putty thanks for watching thanks for watching if you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage you can download my free how to build a NetApp lab for free ebook it's got full step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a complete NetApp lab and best of all you can run it all for free on your laptop and if you want to get my complete NetApp course, which covers everything you need to know about NetApp storage, you can check out the other video that you can see here too. Thanks.